Hey, thanks for dropping by. It's Bronze Dragon. Welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm going to present a wrap up of this past weekend of Diablo 4 play in four play in early access, uh, which I took part in. Uh, I streamed on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you dropped by, thanks. Uh, if you didn't and you, you would like to check out some uh, live action Diablo 4, I will be streaming again next weekend and I will put the times up on my channel. But with that said, I got about uh, two hours each day uh, experience in uh, with Diablo plus a few assorted hours be between the and after the streaming times. I think I, think I got a good handle on what to expect from Diablo 4. Um, although I would still just say that it was just a taste. Um, a taste that left me wanting more um, because obviously I'm a Diablo fan, but um, I was able to walk away with a few um, uh, takeaways, so to speak. Um, I don't, I wouldn't, I would hesitate to call this a comprehensive list, definitely not. But these are some things I noticed and they're in no particular order. So the first thing uh, on Friday, uh, there were, a, were huge queues, okay? So just to give you an example, I was going to start streaming at 7. I figured an hour would be enough to queue up. Queued at 6, as soon as I started to queue, it forecasted 93 minutes. Ended up taking oh, about 70 minutes to get through the queue, though. But uh, pleasantly, after that, uh, Saturday and Sunday, there were no queues. So they had to address the queues and uh, brought more servers online or brought um, whatever their back-end infrastructure is. They brought more online to allow more people on in a quicker manner uh, to reduce the queues. So kudos to them for that. If you hear crinkling, I'm going off of a uh, written list here. So that's why I'm looking down. Um, the first thing I will mention is Diablo 4 is dark. Okay, so I only got a taste of the very first cutscene, but it is, if you've played Diablo in the past, it's very much more akin to Diablo 2. And while they haven't released the rating of it, I would be pretty much sure that it's going to be mature rated. You know, I, I if I had a young child below, say, 15 or 16, uh, I probably wouldn't want them to play this. Um, general gameplay? Probably fine. I mean, you're just, uh, in a lot of cases, you're beating up on monsters and you're killing skeletons and stuff like that. But the cutscene uh, that I saw in the initial part of the game, it was pretty violent and pretty bloody. So, um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was rated mature when it came out. Uh, just to give you an idea. Um, Another thing, another takeaway, and obviously this is still in beta, and part of beta is uh, load testing, right? But I will say that there was a lot of lag involved. Okay, Now, when I was in a separate instance with a dungeon or off by myself, it was pretty good. But once I went in town and there were people around, or even when I was out and people uh, you know, came around, even if it was just one or two people, it introduced significant lag. Um, I mean, lag to the point where the character was just jumping around the screen. You know, that type of lag, which makes you want to just, you know, turn the game off, that kind of lag. But once again, that's part of what beta is for, right? So hopefully they get that under control. Um, the first character uh, I played uh, up to level 20 was a sorcerer. And uh, one of the things about uh, playing Diablo is you oftentimes are just in, in the middle of mobs of, of, of monsters and other things. That's the game, right? And you're dependent upon certain your powers going off and certain combinations of powers going off in a timely manner. Now, I... I preface what I'm about to say with that because I noticed a lag time uh, when I was using my frost-based 
uh, sorcerer uh, in a few powers. And the lag time was such that, uh, you know, just drawing conclusions back to Diablo 3, if that lag was introduced into those fights, uh, I probably w it would it would make you die uh, due to that the lag time. And I'm not talking lag time as in like I was talking about earlier when you're in town um, due to network traffic and things like that. I'm due to uh, I'm more speaking about when you press the button, the spell has a certain amount of time before it goes off. That's what I'm talking about. So I think that it's either spell cast time and they're building it into the game or it's some sort of lag. Um, either way, I think they need to take a look at it. Um, another random thing, uh, because I fancy myself somewhat an artist, um, the color palette's very muted. Uh, now, the, the, the color palette in Diablo 3 was muted as well, but in this game, it's much more muted. It fits the setting. The setting is dark, drab, not a lot of bright colors, but it is very muted. And uh, you will notice that in Diablo 4, the scale of the character is a little bit larger than in 3. Okay, so the character is actually, I don't know, I'd probably guess 10 to 15% larger on screen. Um, and everything else is too. So. And that brings up the next point is uh, kind of referencing my previous point on casting is that the overall action within the game, it just seems slower uh, compared to Diablo 3. Um, everything about it just seems, uh, the action just seems a lot slower. And Diablo, I mean, I, you know, it leaves to be, uh, you know, we'll see, but... Uh, e either they meant it to be that way or they're going to have to speed it up somehow um, because you know Diablo 3 uh, if you're used to playing that it's a fast paced game right another random thing is I met the butcher and if you've played Diablo 3 you've met the butcher too and he was an early on boss and uh, when you start out, he's kind of rough to beat, but he's not like an impossible one to beat. So he's your entry level, one of the first few entry level bosses to beat, right? Great character, uh, great kind of backstory type thing. Um, I met him in the bottom of a dungeon kind of by accident, and there was no beating this guy. The, it was off the charts. I mean... Most bosses that you fight have a certain tell, and uh, you can kind of figure out how to beat them by that tell. So Butcher is a big meat tank. He's got a big axe type sword thing, and a uh, big axe, uh, like a meat cleaver. Um, he's big, he blasts you with a big sweeping attack over his head, and it stuns you and it does massive damage but with that said when he does that you have the time because it slightly stuns him to get around back well not this guy he was running faster than i was and he was swiping and anyway i'll leave it at this i don't think they meant the butcher to be beat now if somebody beat him during this uh beta test let me know in the comments I would be in awe because about all I could do is run and die. And I've been playing Diablo for years. So, um, yeah, there's that. He either, either they didn't mean him to be beat or there needs to be some balancing done. Next point. Uh, Overall, I like the storyline, and I think the voice acting is done really well. I don't think the voice acting was, um, you know, thought about in a secondary or tertiary manner. Um, the actors sounded really good and fit the part. Another item which I paid attention to mostly because... I'm in IT. 
I wanted to see how the game was going to perform. So for these tests, uh, I was streaming. So I was using a 1080p monitor streaming on high. And I have a pretty decently new computer and it's running a 3070 with 32 gigs of RAM. Um, but the game itself on high on 1080p was taking about 10 gigs of RAM just by itself. Okay. So what that tells me is if you're playing on 1080p or higher and you expect to run in high um, graphics mode, then you're going to, you're not going to be able to do it if you have eight gigs of RAM or you would be really cutting it close with 12. Uh, 16, you could probably get away with it, uh, depending upon the video card you have. So that's another thing. Uh, I mean, I have my main monitor is a much bigger monitor. Um, and I played it afterwards, uh, after the stream. So I shut off the streaming software and I played it and I had to, sh I had to reduce my graphics settings to medium to play it on an ultra wide with a 3070. And it was taking upwards of 16 gigs of RAM. So that gives you some kind of idea of the hardware requirements. So uh, take a look at your rig if you're going to play this and kind of judge what the graphics settings you're going to be able to play it on. I wouldn't be scared of it uh, because, hey, the game in medium uh, looked really good itself, too. Uh, I give kudos to the artists on because it's definitely a step up from Diablo 3. Another thing I noticed was... Uh, one of the mainstays uh, that I really liked in Diablo 3 was creating armor at the blacksmith, uh, going through dungeons, getting um, recipes, teaching the recipes to the various trade skillers, and creating uh, items and set items. Um, and uh, these weren't the best things in the game, but they were better than nothing, and they gave you a good footing to go ahead and go down into the dungeons and get better things. Well, I say that because apparently that's not a thing anymore. Or it's something that I didn't get into during uh, my brief playtime. Because when you go to the blacksmith, you can upgrade items, and you can upgrade items depending upon the rarity, uh, four or five times, uh, three, four or five times, but he doesn't create anything new. He does the standard repair and break down into materials. It doesn't create, you, you can't teach him uh, new things to create for you. And that kind of leads me into the next thing that I really liked. Uh, they have harvesting in Diablo 4 now. And when you're out and about, you harvest ore, you harvest uh, flowers and different things like that. Um, it's, it's not really a time-consuming thing like in other games. Um, it, you pick it up fast, just like other loot. But those items are used when you're in town to create potions, to upgrade your armor, um, things of this nature. So I'm sure we'll be getting into that much deeper when it goes out in full, but I do like the idea. Random thought here. One other thing that's new to the game is climbing, ducking, and jumping. You'll come to certain parts of the game where you see glowing footprints. And that means that you can press your space bar and climb up a cliff or you know jump across a, a ravine or um, a duck under a wall or something like that and in most cases it left me wondering why because other than just having artwork and having something there for you to do there didn't really seem to be any purpose because you could always just go around i don't know uh, that was just a random thought Another thing I noticed was the repeated use of interior assets. And by that I mean that I went in, I don't know, probably six to eight small cave type instances 
and they were basically all the same cave. And I went in uh, several instances of an interior home and they were basically all the same home. Uh, and there was one other instance of a dungeon that repeated itself as well. And you got to remember, this is all just within the first zone or first level. I mean, it, it, it was comprised by about three different zones, but um, you're, you're basically still in the first chapter, right? The prologue in the first chapter and all this repeating stuff. This leads me to wonder, you know, why they're reusing Obviously, the answer is if you're reusing art assets, you're, you're, you're wanting to save money and not pay artists to make more art assets, right? So, but that's just theory crafting by me. Another highlight of the game that I wanted to bring up was the skill tree. Uh, I'm a big fan of an intricate skill tree. Um, I love the original WoW uh, classic skill tree, that type of thing. Uh, there's several games out now. Uh, one of Diablo's main competitors has an awesome skill tree, Path of Exile. If you've ever played that, love it. Um, it's one of those things that you can get really deep into and get overly complicated with your character, and you can really screw up a character if you don't know exactly what you're doing. But I love just specializing a character. With that said, the skill tree in Diablo now is pretty in depth. Uh, you get a point for every level uh, and you can spend that point as you work your way down the tree and you can specialize. The further you get into it and the more experience you get in certain areas, you can specialize. So, Another thing I found myself missing was massacre streaks. In Diablo 3, that was a big way to level your character fast. Get this massive streak going of 50, 100, 150 kills, and you get this massive bonus of experience. Didn't see that in this game. Maybe they decided to pull it out. I don't know. Remains to be seen, I guess. So, I mean, those were some basic takeaways I had. Uh, I love playing the game. Uh, I'm sure that they're still working on it. Obviously, it's still in beta. We'll be going into next weekend and playing the second weekend. They'll be adding two more classes to the play. Uh, so you'll be able to play Druid and Necromancer next weekend as well. So I'm looking forward to probably playing Druid. Um, but with that said, uh, please join me uh, if you have time and uh, on my live streams. And, uh, you know, the more the merrier, questions going around. Uh, and otherwise, I'll do a wrap up after that, too, because after next weekend, then as far as I know, there's not going to be any play until uh, the first weekend in June, I believe June 2nd, when it's fully released. So with that said, thanks for staying a while. I hope you uh, give me a thumbs up and ring that bell. And uh, if you choose to subscribe, great. With that said, I hope your family is happy and healthy. And I will see you on the flip side.